All right, so how's it going? Uh, today we're just going to go through a quick tutorial on how to do some massing examples and how to mass a roof, essentially, or create a starting mass for um, to place a roof on later on in the project. So I'm just going to start with the massing right now. Um, first thing we want to start with is going into new conceptual mass. Um, just going to start clicking on it. Mass. There's only one option, so just take it. Um, then what we, we are brought to is here, and uh, there's some things that we need to note first off. First off is that there's this base plane here, which is kind of like, uh, which is essentially level one here. Um, then there's this other reference plane right here that's been put in, and it's essentially like looking at you know the north-south kind of elevation idea of it, like how we see here. And this other plane here is kind of like looking at the east-west. All right, so those are some important things to note. Um, another important thing to note is that where the two, the north-south and the east-west um, planes meet together, this is going to be the base point when we place the mass later on. This is going to be where your crosshair is when you're placing. So there's a little thing to note when you're designing, so don't design way off in the corner. Um, design with your base point in mind. Um, so I'm going to just kick it off real easy. Uh, we'll just go to level one to start out. And nicely oriented. We're just going to start placing down some lines to start. Um, some people like to use the reference lines and make a grid and do all that kind of thing. Um, I, however, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to start out with just drawing a couple, a couple lines. Oops. Draw it out just kind of like. I already screwed it up. Let's start that one over. Um, it's a good thing about messing up like this is you always just start over whenever you mess up. So I'm just going to draw a nice little roof shape here, kind of U-shaped. I can edit this later. It doesn't have to be square exactly. It just means I'll have to do more work later. So all I'm saying is I've got this polyline here and all I can do is I can change my adjustments so that it goes off the center and say I'm going to make that 10 feet. I'm going to adjust this guy to be 4 feet. And this kind of do the same. Now, a thing to note is when you select this polyline, it's got, it groups it automatically. So you double click, and then it will bring you right the ways in to your individual uh, modifications. So, let's see here, I'm going to do the same thing, make that 10 feet. And we're going to select this line. Oops. I do that way too often, place down random dimensions, uh, like that four feet wide. All right, now, as you can see, I've kind of got this thing not very square. That's no big wolf. I can just come in here and square it off real easy. Do the same thing up here. Edit that corner. Okay, so then now I've got this. Just going to double check to make sure that this guy is in good nick. So I've got 12 feet here. Um, I said it was 10 feet away from the origin. Let's make this five feet, just to make it nice and square. I like squares. Squares are nice, easy to work with. All right, so we've got a nice little shape right here. Um, this next one is fairly simple. This next step is fairly simple. We're just going to select it, and create a form. And it automatically chooses this solid form, which is nice, um, because that's what we want. Um, when we get later to putting the curves in, we're going to be choosing this void form. So I'm going to deselect it, go to 3D view, and we see we got this little guy right here. Now, a thing to note is that we can select edges or faces here, um, and points, all right? So vertices, as we call them in the the elementary school language that we are also familiar with. So I can choose an edge. I can actually even choose a midpoint of an edge. I can choose a point, a vertice, or a face. All right. So that's that's kind of super key to editing anything. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. Another thing to note is that when you select on a line, there's going to be this little UCS kind of logo shown up here, like how we see in AutoCAD and. Uh, a lot of other Autodesk products. <clears throat> uh, 
it's really nice this one because it's kind of all relative um, there's nothing really holding it as, as I know or as I like to use that is um, basis it with anything in the world so all I do is when I want to edit something I just grab the arrow and I move it up or I grab the arrow and I move it down so I'm just gonna undo that because that's not what I want to do um, yeah, so there's that. this is our, our our base shape essentially. What I want to do is because I want to edit this height because this height is a little bit high for the kind of roof I'm going to be making in the future. Seven feet high. That's a <coughs> that's a bit high. Um, so all we're going to do is we're just going to take that, edit the digits so that it says four feet because four feet was a friendly number I used last time. Uh, I tried using other numbers and it was not very friendly. Um, yeah, so then all we're going to do is, again, I want to select this guy, and I'm going to make the it offset from this edge here inwards only about two feet, I want to say, for now. So then I get this slope thing kind of going on here. The base here is still four feet wide from this edge here. Um, but this is just something I'm doing to get my general groundwork set in place. So I'm just going to do the same thing here and the same thing here that two feet so it's kind of got this nice nifty little beveled edge going all the way around the outside all right so <clears throat> next step is again fairly simple it's kind of AutoCAD style stuff I'm gonna select this uh, north south pane um, and I'm just gonna go to the back view because this is where this is the face that I want to work on when we look at it come up here there's a face here and a face here um, these are the guys I want to work on. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I have this pane selected already, I'm just going to hit set. And now basically Revit has taken uh, that pane I had just selected and said, okay, this is the plane we're working in for the next little while until I say something else. So this is nice because I have a good degree of control here. But so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the half circle here. I'm going to select this to draw and work plane. Um, makes life a little bit easier for me because I've already set the plane so we're good to go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select my top vertice here and my bottom vertice here. I'm going to drag it in a little bit and you can see kind of the radius showing up. Now all I want to do is just select my radius so I can just type in a number so I'm going to say six foot radius. It seemed to work nicely. And then without even clicking away from anything, that's a mistake that I started making earlier on when I was using Revit, is clicking away and starting over. You just go in here and just hit the line and just complete it. And now I've just made a shape. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side while I'm here. Might as well. Quick, easy. Six foot radius. Here we go. Line. Close it off. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 3D view. You guys are going to be able to see. I am in 3D view. I'm going to go to the south, the northeast, and I'll show you guys what's up here. So, essentially I've made a 2D polyline loop. Um, in layman's terms, I've essentially made a semicircle, a closed off semicircle in the edge. It's a 2D shape sitting on the face of a 3D shape. Now all I want to do is I want to take that 2D shape and I want to make it a three-dimensional shape. Not only do I want to make it a three-dimensional shape, I want to make it a three-dimensional void. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to I've got it highlighted, so I'm just going to select it here, and I can do two at one time. So I select oops, this one and this one. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say create form, void form, because before we created a solid form, we're just going to create a void form here. Let's try it one at a time. Void form, done. So it's got this plane set up, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to deselect away because that seems to work a little bit better. I can drag it through, deselect, and it's taken that chunk out. Important thing to note as well is make sure that it's inside the shape instead of outside of it. Uh, that usually helps. So I'm going to do this one at the same time. Create form, void form, click away. There we go. It's taken the chunk away. So now, again, when I was talking about edges, vertices, and uh, faces, we we'll want to select the interior edge here, this curved edge. We don't want to select the entire face here. Um, because that's going to drag the entire, this this, sh this chunk that we've already made, it's going to drag it across. And that's not what we want, that dog don't hunt today. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the line, be very careful, there's the line. 
Select this little green arrow here, and it's literally all drag and drop from here on out because it snaps right to the end there. Snapped. Done. All right. So I'm going to see that. Show you guys that again on this side. I'm going to go on here on the edge, not the face, not the face, but the edge. Then there's this little green arrow here. That's the direction that we want to drag this this void in. So I'm going to select it. Just drag it until I get that blue line snap across. Done. Okay. So fairly simple void shape. Pop it up here into three the front face here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my panes. So I'm going to model in a different view. Uh, I'm going to select this one. This is our, our north, or, sorry, our east west uh, pane. That allows us to look from the west to the east. I'm going to be looking from the west to the east. So I'm going to select the western side, and now that I can see my view pane, I know I'm nicely set up, I'm just going to hit set. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm just going to do... Ugh, something I hate when it does that, it kicks me out to a further, end view, further away view. So I'm going to select my end vertice here, select the inside here, and then I'm just going to edit my radius to be 6 feet. Select line close off the shape. Hit escape, we're good to go. Just got to go up to 3D view here. Now what's happened is it's drawn, that, that 2D shape that I drew on the ends here has been drawn in the center of the shape. This isn't really a big deal, it's just choosing the pane. Um, you can still select the entire 2D shape actually. So I select it and I'm, all I'm going to do is again, same thing, create void. And it's kind of freaking out a little bit around here, but that's okay. I just select away, it gives me my chunk. If I look in here, I can get that edge. Now we're selecting the red one in this way because um, traditionally in Autodesk products, green is the X axis, I believe, and red is the Y. Uh, is that correct? Blue is always the Z. I know that for sure. Um, yes, and green is the X, and red is the Y. So we want to move it across the Y axis here. And we're just going to do the same kind of thing. You can stop midway through if you if you like. Like I mean, if you wanted this kind of a shape on the corner, but you wanted like the pattern in the middle, that's okay too. But I want it all the way to the end, so I'm just going to drag and drop it at the end so it lines up. Which is all good. Good in the hood. Come around to this side, select the edge again. When it wants to work for me. There we go. Now, there's that red axis. Now, for some reason, it changes it here. I'm not exactly sure why, um, but it gives you two orange ones. It's pretty much the same deal. Um, just go until it snaps over, and we're happy. This is our form. So I'm just going to save this right now, because that is the most important part of any kind of work you do in Revit. Sometimes you get screwed over when it crashes, and um, I'm just going to overwrite this old file. But sometimes you get screwed over if you don't save often. Um, so I want to overwrite that. Anyways, so now this is the shape that we've got. All right, it's a nice fancy 3D shape. This nice little curve on the back, across the front. Rather nice. Looks like it'd wrap around nicely on a porch. So now all I want to do is I want to load this into my project. But before I do, I need to open up a new project, or have the project that I'm working in open in the background. Um, I'm just going to do this in a new project because it makes I don't have another project that I need this for. Um, architectural template. I like architectural templates. That's what I do. And all I'm going to do here is I've loaded up a new project. I'm just going to minimize this. Come into this guy here and just say load new project. And it gives you this default um, massing thing. I just say close. It doesn't really affect my life any. Um, so now I can place this literally wherever I want. Uh, I'm just going to place one in the middle. I don't need more than one. But come to 3D view. It changes to fine, realistic, and there is our mass. All right. So all I'm going to do now is just point out that it's the mass has this distinct blue color. It's a darker blue when we actually select them when we're placing our roof. We're going to note that the roof is. Um, the, the ones that we select are actually a lighter shade of blue. So I'm just going to quickly design a roof by face. I'm just going to take this guy. I'm going to make it a little bit 
more realistic, more like something I would do. Uh, my roof, if I could spell it, would be great. And all I'm going to do is just say this is going to be 3.5 inches because that is the uh, the actual dimensions, the actual uh, depth of a um, of a nominal piece of lumber, which is two by four. This is an exterior um, facade kind of idea. So we don't need to be doing anything terribly structural, but most it'll be taking will be snow loads, maybe some wind loads and stuff like that. Um, again, I'm no engineer, but I mean this is just me making some speculation. So choose structure wood joist rafter layer. Um, again, because it's a non-insulated layer, we don't it's outside, we don't need to have an insulated layer. So we're gonna insulate or sorry, add another uh, layer here and change it to finish five, change the material type to asphalt shingle. Thickness, I'm going to say one inch because after you get all that other kind of stuff that's between the joists and the asphalt in there, it's going to be about an inch to two inches. So, and roll with that, say okay, we're good to go here. So, I just select multiple, is what I'm selected on here. I can select one individually, um, but it works best if you select multiple because what will happen, I, I found this out in the last one, um, it'll the program will will take the ones that you've selected, and then when you hit create roof after you've selected all of your faces, it'll say that they're one roof. And then if you missed one, you go back and you just add on another one. Um, it won't keep it as one solid roof. It'll you'll have two different components that you'll have to move around, um, which can be a little bit frustrating. Anyways, um, I'm just going to select the parts that I want for the roof. So again, I'm going to select the faces, not the edges. Uh, you can't really select edges or points here, you can really only select faces, just make sure you're selecting the right ones. So I'm going to select this one, I'm going to select this one, you don't need to worry about the control function, uh, it doesn't count here because it just, it's not, it's not an effect. It knows you're selecting multiple uh, faces to place a roof on, so it, it doesn't make you hold down the control key, which is, which is rather nice. So I selected all the faces I want a roof on, I'm just going to hit create roof, and there we go. Hit escape so I'm not selecting it. And there is my roof. And it's got this nice little curved shape, and that worked out a lot nicer. Um, one thing I would like to do, what I like to do when I'm finished this, if I do create a roof from the mass, um, I usually leave the mass in place uh, in whatever file I'm working in because it's generally easier to go back and modify it afterwards um, when, you, when the mass is there, as opposed to when you just delete the mass and you know, the whole thing goes away. But let's see what happens. Delete the mass. Yeah, you've still got your roof there. But if I were to need to go back and edit that later on, that would be a big pain in the butt. So all I do is I just take my mass and I'll just right click, hide it in view, and it's gone. Doesn't really matter. It's irrelevant. So that's how I design curved roofs um, by massing. Um, Obviously, the same standard roof stuff applies. You can throw on um, a soffit, fascia, that kind of stuff, just selecting your points and doing this kind of good stuff. Again, I'm just quickly throwing this together so you guys can see. That's good for me. That's all I want it for. Uh, roof gutter, go with the typical gutter style. Select the fascia all the ways around, and if I even wanted to, I could even add on a soffit as well, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as that, because realistically that's that's a pretty simple thing. It's just point and click um, kind of thing. Alright, so I hope this helps out a lot. Um, I hope you guys can figure out what you guys need done for your tech report project, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a sweet looking canopy, and you guys can really incorporate some Victorian era style around your house. Should be good. Alright, best of luck guys.